So this is the big old camera, huh? Okay. Hey Snoopy, where's Woodstock? I was asked if I wanted to review a webcam that could control a 3D printer. And it's very affordable, but it has a real unique name. And it's kind of cute. And what do we have here? Well, it looks like we have the Michand Beagle Cam. Hmm. Well, it's uh, $69. It's got a 1080p camera. It can record up 32 gigs, but ah, man, this looks familiar. What does this look like? You look like Snoopy, and it makes me smile. Given the fact of how much Raspberry Pis cost right now, this is a, <laughs> if this works, this is an excellent deal. So what's in the box? Well, we have a quick start guide here. Uh, one side just shows you the camera and the specs. And the other side you know, shows you how to hook up everything. It looks like it's pretty simple enough, and you just have to download an app and connect. Okay. So what else we got here? <laughs> it's rather cute. It's the Beagle camera. <laughs> I think the eyes are non-functional, but anyways, let's go ahead and see what else is in here. Oh, what is this? Are you kidding me? Yes, you get a USB charging block. <laughs> I can't believe I'm actually excited about this because no one ever supplies them. You always have to bring your own. And we have a USB-C charging cable. This will actually power up the camera. Yep, seems to be a decent length. And here is a micro USB. So if you have a different type of cable, you'll need to provide your own to hook up to your printer. I will be using a uh, cable that I have for a different printer. And this looks to be like a reset pin or something. Almost like ejecting your SIM card from a cell phone. And that is it. Well, again, this is a uh, pretty light and it has removable storage, which is a major plus 32 gig micro SD card. And you just, of course, push to eject it and then push back in. Now we're going to hook this up to the Ender 3 Pro-ish 3D printer. And this takes a mini USB and we're going to just plug this into the back. That's for the printer. And then the USB-C plugs into the side and that goes to your charging block. Very simple and straightforward. Next, we're gonna download the app to my phone. I use the iPhone. And basically all we have to do is do a sign up, create a new account. And of course, you're gonna to have to just put in all your information here. But once you do, you log in. And then we're gonna kick off the AP configuration. And we're going to click on that. It's going to tell you to hook up everything. And then once we do, we're going to click next. Then you're going to put your Wi-Fi account information in here. And then once you do, you're going to click next. And this is where we need to pay attention. You're going to go into your settings for search for a Wi-Fi. You're going to do that. Look for that BG cam. And then you're going to type in that password, which is zero through seven. And that will connect basically your Beagle cam to your home network. And once you hit the password, you hit join. It will populate right there. And then you go back to the app. And then you click next. And of course, I fast forward it, but it will say connected to Wi-Fi. And that's it. Are you kidding me? That is literally it. Now that this is on our Wi-Fi, I'm going to click on the gear in the lower right. I'm going to choose my printer. And this is a Creality Ender 3 Pro-ish. So let's make sure that we choose Ender 3 Pro-ish on there. And everything looks good. Our baud rate, printer size. Yep. And I'm going to click on Connect in the upper right. And that will connect our printer. And once I do that, I'm going to just click on the Home on the left side. This will just home my Z, or actually my X and Y. And now I'm going to hit home for my Z. <laughs> Pretty darn seamless. It just, just works. I love having something that works out of box. Really, really nice. And you can control, you know, all the movements there, which is nice. You could disable the stepper motors. 
I've been running this for a little bit and um, we can click on the files. You can download your time lapses or you can go ahead and delete them. Um, and you can actually watch them on your phone as well. It's pretty nice. And we can click on the temperature icon at the bottom. You can monitor your hot end and your bed temp. And let's see here. We can go and click on the gear for the camera settings. This is where we're going to modify our retraction and re speed and retraction distance. I am using the MicroSwiss NG, so this needs to be changed. Retraction speed will be set to 35. And the retraction distance, I would like to have it at 0 0.08, but it doesn't do 0.8, or, so I'm going to just have to do one, and that should still work work fine. And then we're going to just go back and uh, we're going to now check our IP address. We're going to just write this down for a future reference. Now let's go ahead and slice something. I'm going to just use Cura here and I'm just working on a small project here. And it just takes a lot and a lot of parts. So we're going to go ahead and slice it and then we're going to save it locally on the computer. Go ahead and open up a web page and type in the IP address that uh, was in the app. This is where we're going to upload our files. You're going to click on the printable file list on the right then you're going to click on the upload button. You're going to find your sliced file and then you're going to then click upload. We're going to wait a few seconds here for it to finish and then we're going to click on the print button. It's pretty darn easy. That's all you have to do. Then you can just verify everything's ready to print and this can actually be done on your phone as well if you had the files on your phone. You can upload and do everything just like on the web page. Now I did use a tumbler to mount the camera on, so it was actually at a height that could do a nice time lapses. Speaking of time lapses, let's check out a few. So where are my thoughts of this uh, big old camera? <laughs> well, I think it works really, really good. Out of the box, everything just worked as it should. Now, of course, there are some things I like to bring to your attention. And what is that? Well, it's very, very light. And there's really, like the base is light too. So here, watch, you just really touch it and it flops. It'd be nice to have some type of like tensioner on the side or something so you could adjust it and maybe have a little bit more weight on the bottom so it doesn't fall over. I mean, it's very cute, but I mean, everything really worked well out of the box. However, it doesn't work with all three printers yet. Let's uh, head over to their website. You have a compatible 3D printers list and a on testing 3D printers list. Now I really wanted to hook this up to my Prusa Mini and the menu was there, but it wasn't ready and I think if it's not ready it shouldn't be on the list to choose from. You can see it right here. Mini Plus. Oh well. So at least they're working on it but I suggest they just remove it until it's ready. And then you can see that you have compatible slicers here and they're still working on like the Prusa slicer. Other than that, I mean for $69 given the market right now it is a fantastic deal. It's a very cute looking camera. <laughs> and you know what? It just works out of the box and that's all I can say. I mean, it doesn't work with all printers yet, but they are working on it. Plus, I can literally monitor my printer anywhere in the world. I mean, as long as I have an internet connection on my cell phone, I can monitor it at home on a web browser. It is just that easy. I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in. Catch you the next time on Tripod's Garage.